In today's video, I want to chat to you guys about reporting in Sage Accounting. <clears throat> My name is Henry Huvi. I'm an accountant. I've been in practice since about 2008. And I think I've been working on the stage since about 2009. So I've been around the block a couple of times. I've got the t-shirt, so I know more or less what I'm talking about when it comes to Sage Accounting. Before I start with the video, remember that if you do want to sign up for Sage, there's a referral link inside the description of the video. If you do want to sign up, I want to ask you please to use my link to sign up for Sage. And then also, remember to give the video a like, remember to hit subscribe, and let me quickly shoot down to my computer. Then I can explain to you guys quickly what reporting is about when we work on Sage Accounting, or probably any accounting package, the same rules will still apply. Now, I think reporting... On any accounting packages, obviously the ultimate purpose of why you run an accounting package so you can run some accurate reports. And the main reason why I want to run accurate reports is so that you can make proper decisions based on proper historical data. So with that being said, remember the backbone of any accounting package is your bank account. You must firstly make sure that your bank balances. If your bank doesn't balance or if you've got unallocated transactions, your reports are going to be out. So that is the starting point. If your bank balances, then 90% of your reports is going to be accurate as well. The other thing we're going to touch on it briefly as well as your age analysis for your, for your, for your customers and your suppliers. Those two ones must be really, it's really important to make sure that those ones balance it. But let me show you quickly. So if you go to reports, you'll see that under reports, you can see you've got a lot of different types of reports. You've got accounting, intelligence, reporting, customer supplies, items. You can go through the whole lot. <coughs> the first thing that I maybe want to look at first is you must first make sure that your bank balances. So if you go to your banking, remember that if you've got your bank feeds running, then um, by default you'll be able to see whether your bank actually balances. And uh, the, the way that you would find it is if your bank feed is linked, there will be a little button over there where you can go check whether the bank balances. If you don't have that function, it's not difficult either. You can go to um, accountants area. Let's quickly go back to reports. So if I go back to financial statements and I run an income statement or just a balance sheet that is specific day, data printers, I'm going to see the different options you've got as a profit and loss balance sheet and a trial balance sheet. If I go look at the balance sheet, because remember that all that I want to do now is I just want to confirm that my bank balances. So that is the starting point. So if I go look at the end of a previous reporting period, which would be end of June. Remember, you always put a balance sheet on a specific date because that is like a picture of what your business looked like in that specific date. So balance sheet end of June, then I can go double check quickly over here to say what is my, my credit card account, what is my investment account, what is my bank account, my petty cash. So you must make sure that you've got these accounts that they do balance over there. That's a starting point. Like I say, if your bank account balances, 90% of the information is going to correct. And I'm going to come back to the balance sheet just now. The next thing we will want to check is if you go to customers, if you go to reports and you go to customer balances, days outstanding. I'm just going to right click on it and say open, uh, come on. I thought it was going to open in a new tab. It didn't, which is fine, but I want to run my balance sheet or my custom H analysis for the same date as what I ran my balance sheet. So I'm going to check the 30th of June and I'm going to have a quick look to make sure that these balances are outstanding from our customers. So this is a list of all the people who owes me money. I've done a separate video on customers and, and invoicing and stuff, so you can go check it out there. But what you need to look out for when you look at this list is clients with negative balances. So if you've got somebody with a negative balance, it means that you've received a payment from a client, but they but you haven't created an invoice for that. So that is obviously going to affect your income statement and your debtors account and your balance sheet. So that's really, really important. You must go double check that these amounts are accurate. <coughs> so if you do you have amounts on here where perhaps you invoice somebody incorrectly or something like that or maybe you haven't allocated a payment from one of your customers then I would highly suggest that you first rectify that before you even start running the other reports. So the other one that we're going to look at as well is your suppliers. Same thing, you go to reports and you go look at supply balance as days outstanding and then you go look and see what you owed your suppliers on that same date. Remember we are running some reports for the end of June, so I just want to disrupt this back to the end of June just to see, because now we will have a picture to say whether my bank balances, remember that's step number one, whether my customer age analysis is right, whether the people who owe me money do owe me money. And the, this one is the one for your suppliers. You can see these guys are 29 million rand for, you, for their suppliers. So in theory, for each one of these suppliers, you must be able to get a statement from that supplier confirming that you do owe that person 7.5 million, this one 1.2 million, 954. And once again, when you have supply payments like this list of here, where he shows minus 242,000 rand, it means that you're somewhere you've paid the supplier, but you haven't captured the 
supply invoice and therefore it's got a negative balance. So that remember that I've done the separate video on supplies and supply payments of how to do, uh, do that and that is obviously the purpose of that video as well. So this reporting video is actually the culmination of all the videos together and this is what we're aiming for with our accounting package. Remember we did look at the bank, you must make sure the bank balances. Second thing is your suppliers or your customer, your customer invoice balances and then your supply invoices. So once we have confirmation that those three amounts are correct, now we can start looking at some reports. So if I go back to reports, I'll go to financial statements. I'm just going to just open that in a new link and we're going to run a balance sheet quickly for, let's call it, uh, maybe let me open that in a new tab as well and I want to open one more one in another tab. So this is where people don't always understand how a balance sheet works. So remember, a balance sheet is like a snapshot of what happened to your business on a specific date. On the 30th of June 2025, I could see that inside my business, uh, we had uh, non-current assets of 770,000 Rand, current assets of 33 million Rand, so the total assets was 34 million Rand. Plus minus, you can see we've got some opening balances over there, retained income profit for the year, and you can see we've got a liabilities, a loan of the owner, trade payables, and other loans, and, and then you can see that your total liabilities was 29 million Rand. So that is the picture of what your business then looks like on the 30th of June. It's like taking a picture of a tree on a specific date. On, on that specific date, you can go count and see how many branches the tree had, how many leaves the tree had, how long the tree was. So that is the idea of a balance sheet, is to take a photo of the position of your business on that specific date. So remember, the, in the old days, they used to call the, the statement of financial position a balance sheet. So a lot of accountants and old people still refer to balance sheet. But I think the statement of financial position is a better description of the purpose of this report because you want to see that picture of what your business looks like. So, so this is what the picture looked like at the end of June. So now we must go compare to see what did that picture look like at the end of May, because remember, we want to run a report for the month of June. So we want to see what changed. So if I had to compare the picture at the end of June uh, of that same tree to say how many branches, how many leaves and stuff, uh, what was the height of the tree at the end of May, what that tree now looks like at the end of June, then we can go see, listen, but there was five more branches, ten more leaves, and what, then the thing that's going to determine how that happened is your statement of um, your, your income statement. So that is the, the, the next one, your statement of financial performance. So this is then my balance sheet for the end of May. So I can go have a look and see 768,000 rand was my total non-current assets. If I look end of June, that amount should be the same. Your non-current assets doesn't really move often unless if you go buy cars or buy buildings and stuff, then that amount would change. If you look at your current assets, you can see current assets was 32, 31,300,000 rand. Now I can see that we've got 33 million rand. So there was definitely an increase in my current assets. And then if you can look at your liabilities, you can see loan from owner was 100,000 rand end of June. If I look at end of May, there was also 100,000 rand. If I look at my current liabilities, we had 28 million rand. If I look at my current liabilities, 29 million rand. So I can see that my liabilities also grew with a million rand. So then I've got a good picture of what happened between those two, 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 two dates in, the, in terms of the financial position of the business itself. So then, after you make sure that your balance sheet balances at those specific dates, then you can go look at your profit and loss. And on the income statement, you can then go have a look and see what happened, what movements there was, the financial performance of the business for the month of June. Because remember, that is the date now that falls in between those two months that we looked at the financial position of the business. And now you can go see, but where, where did the growth come from? So if I look at my income statement over here, I can see my sales was 2 million rand. And remember just now I said that that report with your customers, uh, your customer balance stays outstanding. If this amount over here is not correct, then it means that this report over here, my income statement, your sales amount is not going to be correct because your sales is linked to your debtors. If you go look at your suppliers, so this balances over here, your supply balances where it shows 29 million rand. If your supply invoices for the month is incorrect, then your total cost of sales for the month is going to be out. So your sales is linked to your debtors and your cost of sales is linked to your purchases. So that's really important. That is what determines 
or what affects the de top part of the income statement. Then you can see you've got all the expenses at the moment. We only have one that says advertising. And then obviously we can see we've got a profit over there. So let me quickly change this. I'm going to show, say, say show report options. I'm going to change my report to say that I want to look at it year to date. And you see now changes are giving me some options. And I want to say that I want to look at this income statement on a, on a monthly basis. So if I say refresh, then you can see that I can run my income statement now from March up until the end of June on a monthly basis. So now I can go compare it to say month for month, what was my sales in March, what was my sales in April, May, June, and then you can go look and see, but why, why is there differences over there? <clears throat> so the really nice thing about Sage is if you hover on an amount and you click on it, then it actually opens up that specific account itself. So you can go look and see what happened inside your sales account, what it is that is sold that made up that specific amount. And then um, with your expenses as well, that's also really, really cool. So you can go compare your expenses with each other to see what happened on a monthly basis. So if you look at, um, let's say for instance, electricity, you can see they've got 292,000, they've got 495. If you're not sure what that amount consists of, then you can click on it and then you'll be able to open up that account. So you can see what, without, what the movement was inside the electricity account. You can see we only had one account over there, one payment of 495,000 rent, and that is what that amount consists of. So then when, it, when, when you're still busy with reports, so there's some other really cool things that you can do in terms of reports. You can go to, back to your report options and you can see that you can actually go and compare to the previous year and you see there's one for budgets as well but you can see that on the year-to-date selection i don't have access to those two buttons but if i change this to say that i want to look at a yearly one and then i still want to look at it on a monthly basis and then now i said that i want to compare it with the previous year and i maybe want to compare it with my budget and oh no let's maybe look last year first and i say refresh then you can see that it's going to open up a report now that i can go compare what happened this year march to last year March. Let's quickly see. So you can see this is last year March what my total sales was. This is my current year March. Last year April, current year April. So that's really, really cool. So you can get some more information of how the business is performing over time. So if I then go say that I want to look at my, compared with my budget and I want to look at my budget variances and I say refresh, then you'll see that and that also opens up a couple of cool things if you loaded your budgets <coughs> on Sage Accounting. So now, and you can see that you've got your, your actuals for March. If you did load a budget, you'll see that the budget amount shows there and it shows you the variance. So if you've got more than what you budgeted for, it's blue. If you overspend or can compare your budget, it's then red. So I think there's so many things that you can fiddle around with with the reports. And, and what I touched on now is just the major ones. Remember, we just looked at a balance sheet. Remember, balance sheet, you must compare two different times and you must make sure your bank balances, H analysis and your debtors and your creditors are correct. Run your balance sheet, make sure that all the balances are correct for the period that you're looking at now, plus the previous period, and then you can go look at the performance of what happened between those two periods over there. And I think, yeah, the rest of the report, so there's a couple of really cool things. So you can go look at this accounts one as well. This is one that we use on often as well. So inside this account, you can go say that you want to look at account transactions, then inside this account transaction report, you can say that you want to maybe <coughs> look at your account transactions on a, for the year to date, or let's, let's maybe make it on a, for a month. And then I want to say monthly. I want to see what happened for the month of uh, June. And then now I can see that you can choose which accounts you want to look at. So if you only want to look at specific accounts, you can select them over there. If you want a specific categories, you can choose it there. And then you can see that you can sort it by accounts. If you say account, then it, what it does, it sorts your accounts alphabetically, if you say financial category, it sorts it according to sales, cost of sales, expenses, balance sheet stuff, assets, liabilities. So if you look at this one over here, you can see there's our sales for the month, and there's our cost of sales, our purchases. Let's quickly run down. There's my advertising account, my equipment account, and then you can see motor vehicles. So these are all the, the, the asset accounts over there. There's your trade receivables. So then these reports are also really, really nice to look at. Last one that we're going to touch on quickly is your VAT reports. So inside your VAT report section over here, you can go have a look and see what is happening, um, how much money you own your VAT, uh, VAT period over here. So you can see now at the moment, you've got an open debt period for January and for February, and you can see it shows 1.4 million rand. If you save your report, then you can see that it'll give you the breakdown of how why you owe the receiver of revenue. The 1.4 million, the top part of the report is going to be the VAT on your sales. So those are all the sales for that period over there. 
<coughs> the bottom part is going to be your VAT and your purchases, so you can then go through this. And then this is normally you would double check to make sure that you're not maybe claiming VAT on something that you're not supposed to be claiming VAT. So this is where all the expenses and your supply invoices appears. Then right at the bottom it gives you a summary of what happens for the VAT period. The one more thing that I want to show you quick, if you go to show, show report options, then you see yes a button that says no VAT transactions. And you say refresh, then the first part of your report is going to open up all the transactions that you process without VAT. So you can also go dig around a bit to see that maybe um, perhaps your land order is VAT registered. And you can see that when you process this transaction in your banking, you didn't say including VAT. So and then you can go change the VAT. Obviously interest, you would know there wouldn't be VAT. Equipment, donations by owner, no, there's no VAT on that. So yeah, you can go through this just to make sure that maybe you didn't miss any expenses where you could have claimed VAT on uh, when you were busy processing uh, the bank statement. Yes, so I think in short, this is the summary then of the reporting section of Sage. And like I said, this is the ultimate thing that we're aiming for when we're doing a, any bookkeeping system. The ultimate purpose of that is to be able to run reports and then based on those reports to make the correct financial, financial decisions. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to hit the like button. Remember to hit subscribe. And I'll see you guys for the next video.